quick disclaimer. Thank you very much to Warner Brothers UK for inviting us to Summer Game Fest to capture an early look at Mortal Kombat 1. Everything you are about to see is pre-release and subject to change, so please keep that in mind in today's Mortal Kombat Overview. Every game has a core mechanic that makes it stand out from the rest in the series, and Mortal Kombat 1 is no exception. The one feature that makes this game stand alone is the Cameo Fighter system, the ability to bring in a second character separate from the base roster to assist you in combat with varying tool sets, whether it's to make a throw game stronger, to grant you a stronger projectile game, or to assist greatly in combo potential. It appears that the Cameo Fighters across the board have almost any tool that you might need, and that's only judging from the three cameo fighters available in the Summer Game Fest build. The cool thing is, with a broader understanding of cameo fighters and how they work on a technical level, watching things like the gameplay debut trailer has allowed us now to see them in a different light, and the theory crafting has already begun in how a player could use certain characters to their advantage. This is Mortal Kombat 1 Explained, where we tell you everything you need to know about the cameo fighters and the mechanics that come with them. For now, at least. Selecting a cameo fighter is simple. Once you've picked your base character, you enter a second character select screen where a player can choose their cameo. In this build, we had access to Sonya, Kano, and Jax. But in the gameplay debut trailer, we've already seen others confirmed. Characters like Goro, or Striker, and even base characters doubling up as cameo as well, like Kung Lao or Sub-Zero. Now that's not to say that current cameo fighters won't be base roster of course, but I'm simply going by what we've seen so far. Activating a cameo in the match itself is done at the touch of a button. In the build we played, cameo was R1 on a PlayStation controller, and pressing the R1 button stand alone, pressing it with a forward or back input, or pressing it while holding down will grant you three different kind of attacks, exclusive to that character. As a quick demonstration, Jax's unblockable ground pound is performed by R1 standalone. Forward or back into R1 is his air grab attack, which will move further or closer to you depending on which direction you're holding. And finally, holding down an R1 is Jax's close range energy wave. All three of these specials will grant a different kind of utility, where Jax can provide combo follow-ups, a scary pressure game due to the ground pound, or other utility with the close range wave that I'm covering shortly. This extends to the other cameo fighters where what they offer changes once again. It is very much a character by character deal here where you'll look at what your base character can do, see what might be missing and try to fill that with a cameo that provides what you're looking for. Or on the opposite end, you might just want to make something you already do well even better. The choice is yours. Cameos are their own separate resource. Next to your character icon, you will notice the cameo fighter is right next to it, with an indicator over how much cameo you have access to. Performing a cameo attack will spend half of this meter, and the meter will regenerate on its own as the move has been performed. This means that at round start, the player will have access to two cameo attacks before having to wait for the meter to recharge. However, the moment half of this is full, another cameo can be used, so it's not a situation where the bar has to be totally full before the player has access to it once again. The recharge timer is pretty generous, so it's clear that the idea is to use these cameos often, as they are a major part of any given match. Cameo fighters do have their limitations. You are unable to use a cameo fighter attack if you are currently being hit or in block stun. Additionally, you cannot use them on the ground unless you're going for a wake up attack. Now, the first thing a player should understand with the cameo fighters is that the attacks a character can do are actually split into two categories, a summon or an ambush. Mechanically, there is a distinct difference between them and that's what I'm going to cover now. An ambush cameo attack is one that sees the cameo fighter perform that special, but there is no movement restriction on the base character you're using. You will be in the middle of a combo string or a jump attack or even standing there doing nothing, and this cameo attack will not restrict you in any way and simply appear, do the attack and retreat. This is designed in such a way that an ambush cameo will aid you in whatever your next plan of attack might be. Possibly the most common use of such an attack will be to make your offense more overwhelming in the form of combos or block pressure. 
For example, Kano's knife toss is an ambush cameo. Kano will throw two knives at the opponent, and these two projectiles will help you in many ways. The knives will extend combos in situations that a combo may not have usually been possible, and Sub-Zero's low string here is usually just a knockdown, but pairing it with the Kano projectile at the correct time sees the knives hit the opponent before they hit the ground, allowing Sub-Zero to turn it into a full combo. This is only possible as the ambush cameo lets you continue to play without movement restrictions, and this is just one instance of many. A summon cameo, however, is mechanically quite different. A summon cameo will see the fighter appear and perform their special as always, but in this case, your base character will be stuck in place for a short time while the special is being performed. Some examples we've already seen of this would be Jack's Energy Wave, Kano Eye Laser, Sonya Energy Ring, or Leg Grab, and that doesn't even mention the trailer characters that have their own selection too. Summon cameos have a lot more of a set purpose in theory, due to the fact that you have to dedicate to these a lot more than an ambush attack. By this, I mean, let's look at Sonya's Leg Grab. This attack will launch the opponent for a combo follow-up, and is used specifically for combos. It doesn't really matter that you're unable to move while she does it, as you can still follow up with a combo extender after this launch has happened. Kano's Eye Laser has a large range covered, and it can shut down movement while keeping the opponent standing. Jax's Energy Wave will knock down and send back to mid-screen. But I already know what some of you are thinking. Some of these moves are just single hits and that's it, so why would you ever use these attacks over the other attacks that might be more useful in the middle of a match? Well, that brings me to a summon-specific feature in the game, and that is wake-up attacks. A summon attack from a cameo will act as a wake-up attack when used correctly off the ground. Now, seeing as the game has limited wake-up options, having a summon cameo with a strong wake-up attack is certainly a tool worth considering when entering a fight. Something like the Jack's Energy Wave may seem a bit weak in comparison to his other moves by itself, but it is the only cameo attack that he has that can be used as a wake-up in a desperate situation. On that note, however, a few of the summon cameo attacks will actually change when used as a wake-up, and in this build we got to see a rather clear example of that. Sonya's leg grab. It's a summon, and it launches them, right? I've already talked about it. So, does she have a launching wake-up from this? No. It splats the opponent on the ground if it's used as a wake-up, which I assume is a rather clear direction behind wake-up attacks that grant the player possibly too much reward. The summon wake-up meta will certainly be interesting here as usually wake-up attacks are tied to your super meter in MK1, as the only attacks you have normally that can even count as a wake-up attack is an armored special move that you just so happen to use off the ground for the cost of meter. If you have no meter available, this is where the cameo wake-up Cups will become a lot more useful to you. Cameos do a lot more than provide extra attacks. The cameo a player will select is actually a major part of the throw game in Mortal Kombat 1. Here's why. A side-switching throw will always be performed by the base character. However, a forward throw will always be performed by your cameo fighter. This means, should a cameo fighter have a powerful throw, this will be universal to you, no matter the base character that you've selected. Some cameos seem to have unique elements to their throw as well, as in this build, Jax was able to enhance his throw for up to two bars of meter, making the throw do more damage and even side switch depending on the meter that you spend on it. Additionally, there is an extra mechanic in place. Should the player use a forward throw while the cameo is in play, the throw becomes a shove that keeps them standing. But you can still hit the opponent with a cameo attack during this state. Kano can use both of his knives and his Kano ball to hit the opponent for free while a throw has come out. It could certainly open up for some disgusting mix-up options, but of course, we'll just have to find that one out ourselves. The cameo fighter is needed to perform the game's combo breaker, and in Mortal Kombat 1, combo breakers are a costly defensive option. You see, breakers work as they have done for many years in this game, and the breaker itself is a lot more like MKX or MK9 than MK11, as the breakaway is no longer present here. This means the breaker works the same way it did in those games, where a player must hold towards and block to execute a combo breaker. 
But here, they cost more than they ever have before. It costs you all three bars of meter, and you need a cameo ready to go, as the cameo fighter is the one that performs the combo breaker animation. While this is absolutely the most expensive breaker in the history of Mortal Kombat, you can break more damage than ever before. As in Mortal Kombat 1, Fatal Blows, which have always been unbreakable up until this point, are now breakable if used in combos. Speaking of Fatal Blow, the big standout super move of the game is back where at roughly 30% health or lower, a fatal blow can be used by pressing both of the shoulder buttons at the same time. There isn't much need to go into detail here, as the reason I bring it up is because both you and your cameo fighter will take it in turns to perform separate animations during this state, and truthfully, it's unclear if this is just for cinematic purposes or if some cameo fighters have more damage in their portion of the super move than others. We will just have to wait and see. The cameo is not immune to being hit by the opponent's attacks. If your cameo comes into play and gets hit by something, the player will take a small portion of damage and the cameo is forced to retreat. The big penalty here is that should a cameo take a hit, they are unable to be used for a short time. Now We counted roughly 5 or so seconds, but as it's an early build, we're definitely not going to give you guaranteed numbers. It is simply far too early for that. The cameo taking a hit, however, is multi-layered in its utility. Yes, you take a small portion of damage, and yes, the cameo is out of action for a short time, but the cameo takes the hit instead of you if you're in front of a projectile or something. And this is where potential strategy develops. Should you be against a ranged character or someone with a good projectile, there's always a chance that the cameo gets summoned, absorbs the hit, and leaves you free to continue moving forward. I do wonder if one day, will see that as a potential strategy in key situations. Now, at this stage, I really want to dive into what the cameo system can do for the combo game. And not only that, but the pressure and the mix-ups that can follow, because this is where, from an execution standpoint, the cameo system truly thrives. Ambush cameos are key to on-the-spot conversions or grounded combos and setups, and the cameo will be super important for how you want to play the game. And instead of explaining the theory behind it, I just want to give you a selection of examples instead. The combos you've likely seen the most from the capture session at Summer Game Fest involve Sub-Zero and Sonya, the reason being that Sonya is able to use her square wave assist, which is an ambush attack, to continue air juggles that Sub-Zero can set up. In many examples, the combo in question tends to be a Sub-Zero ground freeze, a pop-up into a 1-2 ground bounce, and this is where the Sonya assist will connect and keep the opponent in the air for long enough that Sub-Zero can comfortably re-jump and then hit some more damage into either an air combo ender or a dive kick into a grounded finish, all of which doing respectable damage. Another thing ambush cameos can do is provide more hits in a combo where specials that would otherwise not link together will actually do so. In this example, Sonya's square wave assist provides extra juggle time for a grounded sub-zero freeze to work without dropping. Sadly, we were unable to capture my next example in this way, but a grounded sub-zero string into a freeze usually doesn't work as the ice ball takes way too long to start up. But if you use Kano's knife assist at the right time, Time, it will let a grounded string into regular freeze work, as the two knives will actually fill that gap that would otherwise drop the ice ball in the combo. Liu Kang has a bunch of strings that will take the opponent off the ground after a few hits, and usually Liu Kang has to perform various special moves to launch them here, but something like a Jack's air grab will pick them up for a juggle without needing a special move to do so. Katana has a fair few instances where Sonya's square wave appears to give some more combo possibilities, but truthfully we haven't seen a huge amount of Katana, so I'm certainly not going to say for sure how dependent Katana will be for cameo assists in her launching game. Most characters do appear to be just fine by themselves after all. Now Kano really does give the extra options when it comes to combos and setups, as his knife toss, as I've said earlier, can cause otherwise uncomboable strings to actually combo into something else. Doing this with Sub-Zero gives the character a full combo off both the overhead and low options, which is very scary to begin with. 
but even then, Kano's Kano Ball Assist is an ambush move and can be held down to charge it and then released at will. My point here is that Sub-Zero can use Kano Cameo to aid in the combos from all mix-up options, and then you can end the combo with a Kano Ball that's being charged, where Sub-Zero can mix you up with low, overhead, or throw, and if blocked, Kano Ball is let go to prevent the opponent from punishing you. And this is just the beginning of the wild, aggressive options MK1 might grant you as a player. There is no doubt that there's more to cover, more to find, and with the fact that we've only seen a tiny selection of characters so far, that the cameo system will have even more to offer when the game fully launches in September. But with the Summer Games Fest build, it certainly felt like enough to start you on your journey of understanding just how everything works. Thank you again to Warner Bros UK for the capture session, and thank you all for watching. Take care and we'll see you next time.